Good afternoon. It is March 30th, 2020. This is the Service Heroes Show. My name is Tamara Hunter. I am your host. And today, as promised, I am so excited. We have an Emmy Award winning documentary director that is a creator, a producer, a singer. I mean, what don't you do, Skip Thomas? You are with us today and you are our service hero. Welcome. Well, thank you very much, Tamara. It's um, it's great to be here. Thank you. We we tried this a year. Uh, when did we try this? When you first started? Uh, yeah, it's probably about two years ago. And 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 you can you believe that that we? Uh, I think we tried it for a few days and finally just kind of gave up on it. And I just kind of like bragged about everything you do and have been doing as a supporter of Chemo Buddies for Life and. And we were never able to actually get you on to the show until today. And how appropriate that it is today, because today is a very big day in our neck of the woods at Chemo Buddies for Life. And no, you did not have the time wrong. Mikey, We just like yesterday, we had a few technical issues going live. However, we are live. And um, we've got everybody starting to say hello to each other. Hello, Carol. Hello, Brooke. And yes, you're right, Carol, maybe some technical issues. We had a few, but we worked through them, right? <laughs> we did work through there. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mikey and Carol. And uh, who else is on here? Guess we have there. Crystal and Gina and Kevin. Uh, yeah, we've got a few people that have said MJ. hello, stopped in. And yeah. yes, MJ Raven, uh, who now she said, I get to call her Raven, so I guess I'm in the in crowd. <laughs> that you know, and and uh, you know, you you have worked with MJ Ra MJ's Raven now a few times, and and all of it has been in regards to working with Chemo Buddies for Life. And you you joined us not long ago as on and the board of directors may i just say like pinch myself yes uh you know so it's much. my honor it's my honor it really is it's my honor thank you You're but, yeah we uh, met um some three years plus i don't it's been a long time uh, mm -hmm. working to develop our nonprofits, and um and we met through a large group of people that were working on nonprofits. And uh, because I myself was a cancer survivor as of 10 and a half years ago, uh, I had certainly an interest in what the heck you were talking about doing. And it's like, wait a second, what? I said, because that it would, and I know this is not a chemo buddy show, but it was, it, it meant so much that um, because I, when I went through it, there was the doctors and nurses, but there was no, um, nobody to talk to. And I was 1,250 miles away from my family out in Sedona, Arizona. And I didn't even know whether to call. Actually, I, I decided not to tell anybody because I didn't want to worry them thinking, you know, what can they do? I'll, but worry. I have four kids and my girls, three girls, and they are very emotional. And I thought, no, I'm not going to tell them until I know the prognosis. And then when I did, the doctor told me it wasn't very good. Um, I thought, okay, I'm not I'm not going to tell them for sure now. And, um, uh, but I thought this is, you know, in the film, I've done so many documentaries and promotional things with cancer and kids with cancer and uh, so much in the medical world. And all that stuff happened to somebody else. And I filmed it. Mm -hmm. And I was very sensitive to it. And I told the stories, which um, I loved telling people's stories. But suddenly this became my story. And it was not a story I ever thought I would be telling. And um, I was right in the middle of a documentary film that was actually is right now on Gaia TV called Sacred Journey of the Heart. And it was in Europe and Glastonbury and Stonehenge and Hawaii and all over the country filming. And I was editing it. And when I got the diagnosis, I called the producers. I said, there's a chance that um, I'm not going to be the person that finishes this film. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And um, they went to I suggested some people they went to them for a couple months and then they came back to me and said no we're working with you we're going to wait for you to get through this and we want you to finish the film so i was editing then they made me that picture on the, on the left they made me come in and um and said okay we want you to when we come down with the camera they were in phoenix i was in sedona and they said bring your camera but we want to turn the camera on you and i thought for what and she said we want you to tell your story 
I said, no, no, no. I'm behind the camera. I do the filming. You, I'm the director. You're the producer, but it's your story. And I'm just here doing this. I said, no, it's really important for you to tell your story. So purposely, I didn't shave for like four days. I wore a t-shirt that had holes in it. <laughs> thinking, <laughs> thinking they'd see me go, okay, you're right. We can't put you on camera. And they did, and that was me. And uh, anyway, but it's on. Uh, but yeah, it won a lot of awards and blah blah. blah. But it was it was about the uh, the power of the heart and the, and the mind and the coherence. Got to work with the Institute of Heart Math and uh, Greg Braden, um, Joe Dispenza. A lot of great people are in this. And then I did a lot of filming with Native American Indigenous tribes around the world, and a lot of them talked about the power of the heart. And that's what Greg Braden, everybody was talking about. So. It became a, it became really um, a healing therapy for both myself and the producer because they, little did I know until I came back in, but they had some issues about forgiveness. They went to a thing called radical forgiveness and really worked on themselves. And we both came out of that two, three month period back on this film. The film totally took on a different meaning. And it really was a sacred journey of our heart, but we were able to... Um, uh, do a story that uh, well it's on gaia tv you can go there and see it for a dollar or if you're a member but um it was uh it's funny because aaron had talked about it she told you about it right oh yeah yeah in fact and i'm just looking here um uh, kevin is saying hey y'all after this be sure to go to his page at the last post to figure out how to accomplish the task, please. And and I'm not sure what task you're talking about, but I have a feeling it has something to do with the heart because that's a, a heart driven man. Kevin Russell, we had him on not long ago with Warrior Horse and um, and met him when I went to Florida representing Chemo Buddies for Life. And so back to what you're talking about. Yes, Aaron. Uh, in fact, this is so funny because Aaron is my right hand person. Anybody that works with me knows Aaron. Aaron, I, I'm more that 30,000 big picture, get it done, energizing bunny, never stopping, keep going. And, and, you know, like, like you think of that, that boat with the, you know, the, the wake and all the things going on and the, do, 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 the waves and everything. And that's me going through and just like, and then she's the one that like makes it all happen, like pulling it all together. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's accomplish this together. And Erin is that person. And so uh, when she started working with me closely, because uh, it took a little while for that to happen, it was an evolution and I knew it was going to, but she just took a little time to figure it out. And then you and I had already been, working together and and you had been supporting me and I had already gone through that nervous phone call I'll never forget it the very first time I ever talked to you and you said because the the woman that worked with both of us with our nonprofits uh, was one of the chief architects with the Americans with Disabilities Act I mean we're talking big deal and so she's like she's intimidated by you and I'm thinking oh wow Oh yeah, you. And I'm like, uh, uh, who is it that she wants to talk to? And she's like, no, you need to talk to this guy. He's he's like this amazing guy. He totally will get your mission. He's going to be able to help you because I was talking about all the digital platforms and everything. And she's like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him to talk with you. And I'm like, and then she 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 springs on who you are and what your credentials and everything. And I'm like. Oh, okay. okay, not many people intimidate me. And I'm like, okay, I'll have that phone call. And I'll never forget that very first time you were so you, you know, Arkansas, you know, from from Pickles Gap and and Gunk Caller or whatever it is, all of the the, toad, the toad suck. Yeah, yeah, toad suck. Yeah. And and so, you know, you, you were being you and and thank you for that. And so by the time Aaron comes around and I tell her, yeah, you're going to be working with and blah, blah, blah. And then I said, your name. And she goes, wait, wait, wait. Did he have anything to do with a movie that's called Sacred Journey of the Heart? And I'm like, yeah, that's him. She's like, that's my favorite movie. <laughs> Seriously. And, and, and so... And and I go into this, guys, because, you know, really, when, when it comes down to it, because of what we're going to be talking about today, I really want people to understand the humble nature of this man and, and that we all 
you know, like my mom taught me, my mom taught me, we all put our pants on the same way. You know, you can go to the campfire during, you know, the day and go to the White House at night and you're the same person. It doesn't matter because of the fact that it's what's in here and what you're, what's in here in that soul and what we've been talking about with the, the love and the frequency and, and, and how we can impact the world together. And, and so, you know, you, you, yeah, I mean, and I put it out there. I did. And, and I do because, and you're, you're humble about it. In fact, we'll go into that story a bit and then we're going to move on, but you, you, you don't even show images for the movie that you won the Emmy for, and you don't ever show the Emmy. And the reason why is why. I had a big company and a big office, and I probably had a hundred or more awards and stuff and plaques on my wall. And and uh, they, I got to a point in my career, I thought, is that does that define me? And um, and. I, I, I was gaining more and more success and stuff, and I felt more and more empty as I was getting more successful. And I was working on some great projects and some that were just like, well, you know, to run a big company. I had a lot of employees, and I, and I, I, I thought I went through a really a shift, and I boxed all those things up, and I took them to a dumpster, and I threw them all away. <laughs> I thought, that does not define me anymore. It's like and it felt so good, even though it was like some of those were kind of big. But anyway, <laughs> like, like, but, like, but, but, like the Emmy <laughs> threw he threw his Emmy in a dumpster. You know, I had this vision. I, I would love to see this produced sometime, Skip. This video of of you having that that moment in time, and then putting it in there, and then that person that grabs it, and then and then <laughs> you know says, "Oh, you know." I can, I can now have a life, you know, and they grab onto it. And who knows if there's another Skip Thomas out there that's producing yeah. movies now yeah. <laughs> because of the yeah. fact that they grabbed your Emmy. <laughs> you know? Well, I hope it, I hope it better serves them than it did me, but no, it felt good. And I remember it very well. I did keep one award. That was my very first TV commercial. I won, um, actually several Addies and district 10 Addies, a bunch, but it won best of show at the Addies in arkansas and that was a big deal because that's the ultimate best piece of advertising print whatever and it's a nice little nice beautiful tr statue but i thought that was the first commercial i ever did in my life and it won this big award so i'll keep that one just as a reminder that you know i started off having lots of doubts and lots of um you know, questioning whether I was good enough to do it. And so that's kind of a reminder that, you know, just to go back and say, remember when you had that fire burning in your stomach and thought, I've got to make this happen. I've never done a commercial. I got to do it. it was so exciting because I wrote it, shot it, edited it. Well, I edited it in Memphis, but because um, it was back in the days with, with uh, film and, you know, and processing and transfer and a big edit house. But uh, now you can do it on your, you know, on your phone. And so that's, you know, so fun but uh but yeah it's um it, it felt good and it became a shedding process and i think it was symbolic of uh when i moved from arkansas to sedona and nobody knew who i was it was about shedding a lot of things um that uh you, you carry with you and you they're kind of like a big sack and you pull them out and be it ego or be it old stories about issues that you never quite worked out so one of the things working with the Native Americans and, and the indigenous tribes was working through the medicine wheel. And one of the places I actually lived on the campus for a couple of years, it's very shamanic and you work the four directions and the, and you work the, the first direction is the south. The totem was a snake and you shed, the snake has to shed its skin before it can grow and move. And we as humans need to do that with our old stories and the, the baggage and the things we haven't resolved and all the stuff stuff we carry with us that we think defines us. So I made a, uh, <laughs> I made a contract that the only thing I think I've still got from the eighth grade is my old Martin guitar that uh, I still write and play a lot with. And it's, it's gone through a lot of um, marriages, divorces, marriages, divorce, marriage, divorce, um, and just, a, you know, sickness, ill. And, and so you pick it up and that really has been my therapy more than anything but the rest of everything i can it's it's, it's not important so uh, you know uh and i pulled just a few images uh for for our time together and and here is that guitar 
because you you oh. yeah you have You've written songs for for Chemo Buddies for Life. You've written, I mean, you 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 write songs all the time, and then you play them, and then also this is something from your images. Listen to the wind, it talks. Listen to the silence, it speaks. Listen to your heart, it knows. That um, has a lot of uh, meaning to me because. One of the reasons I went to Sedona is my dad um, and my heritage is Cherokee. And my dad, my grandfather was half-blooded Cherokee and very much a, uh, a person that was connected to the land and so forth in, in some of the old ways. My dad became an orthopedic surgeon, very successful, and he didn't want anybody to know he was had Indian in him because it wouldn't be good. And so, But as I was a teenager growing up and hanging around my grandfather, I kept thinking, this is the most spiritual man I've ever met in my life, and he never goes to church. How does that work? And I started hanging around and asking my dad. My dad said, do not spend time. Don't ask him about that. He's a native, you know, you don't want to tell people you're Native American. And um, so on his deathbed, that line, um, I, I there was so much wisdom. And I told him on his deathbed, I said, you know, I really regret not having spent more time and gotten to know you better, uh, to hear the stories and the wisdom of you know you and my ancestors. And he said, I'm always with you. He goes, you just listen to the wind and you'll hear me, but I'll always be there. So that's very compelling, very powerful. And when the wind blows, like it's blowing today out there, it's like some people go, what's this wind? And it's like, yes, wind. And I just get out there, close my eyes and listen. And it's sort of a meditative thing. But, uh, yeah, there's some roots. And I think we're going back to a lot of roots in this event that's going on. We're reconnecting kind of with the DNA, whether it's your ancestry, whether it's you have a special connection to, you know, water or the ocean or the garden or uh, even our family. We're, we're developing connections back to things that we have taken for granted. And even though it's very hard, uh, we can turn this into a very healing. And if you look around and you see people doing churches and uh, out in the open and put music on and, and singing, they were on top of hospitals singing songs. People in Italy are out on the balconies playing and singing. Last night was an amazing, amazing event on Fox, you know, that showed um, different people doing a living room concerts hosted by Elton John. You know, and so I got one friend that said, well, you know, the quality wasn't very good. I couldn't hear him. It's not very well. It's, I said, it's so much bigger than that. I mean, we, this is, you know, dude, this is, this is epic. We are living in a time unlike any other probably in the human race. We haven't gotten through it yet, but when we come out of it, and Mikey was so great because I've been saying two words and he actually said, because I, I said, this is really, you know, we're shifting through a paradigm here. And uh, and this this event is a disrupting, you know, a disruptive, a disruptor in our normal way of life and what we took for granted and what we expect. Mm -hmm. And and Mikey said, "Yeah, that's my name." Is uh, you know my message? And he goes, "This I'm the uh, paradigm disruptor." I thought that's right. <laughs> I, I, I want that. Oh, you know, guy, you already got a bald Avenger. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, is there I any, think there's another one out there that might say something? To you. Is, there, is there anything <laughs> left for me? <laughs> I think there's plenty left for you, Skip. You know, you you are one of a kind, definitely. And I'm glad you watched, um, Carol. I did too. You know, and thank you for sharing that out, Skip. Because when I saw it, it was like, Elton John, you kidding? Huh? <laughs> I'm a huge fan. So, and 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 when I thought about it, it was like, okay, yeah, he was there during the AIDS crisis, and he he was one of the first ones and princess Di and some of these that were really big names that were willing to get out there and start lending their name to something that wasn't necessarily getting the attention. And he brought it up last night that, you know, let's not let it be like that time. It, you know, we are now being socially responsible. We are doing these couch concerts right now to say in the very beginning, you know, we're taking this serious. You need to, too. 
And, you know, he even played on a keyboard that wasn't the typical kind of keyboard that he's used to playing on. As he was saying, it was one of his kids. And and yet, you know, he, he took us out. Don't let the sun go down on you, you know. And and I'm like, oh, yes, there's my man. And, and it was like, yeah, you know. And that goes along with with what you've witnessed, because you have witnessed throughout the world. You've been places with people, places and things, if you will, as they say, you know, we could almost go into a Dr. Seuss thing where, you know, the places you've been, <clears throat> the people you have met and the things that you have documented and, and filmed, <clears throat> you've been in some of those rooms where you, and we won't go into too much of that in the political realm, because I do want to get to <clears throat> being able to share a video that that we are going to be premiering uh, during this show. And then we're going to be announcing a huge announcement with that video in the closed group tonight for Magic Monday and it's magic uh, for the Chemo Buddies for Life community. But you have witnessed and you have been there and you've seen the paradigm shifts and you have seen seen things that most people would say are you kidding me you know pull and and you're humble about it and i know you are and i and that's what makes you so endearing and people are even noticing that you know it's been said uh let's see uh cali face said, uh uh i'm not finding it right now but she mentioned something about wow you know you, you look so nice and i'm like yeah he is so nice you know that smile is so true that's just who he is so in humble and but you have seen stuff right um yeah i've seen a lot of stuff and i've gotten to travel a lot and the places are beautiful and the people are interesting um and i think what really when i i what comes to the surface is is more the things that have feeling of purpose that made a difference um and some of those might have been afar, you know, from different countries and working with the indigenous tribes. I mean, from the, you know, the gatherings of the leading up to the end of the Mayan calendar with the, um, you know, with the uh, Mayans and the uh, Kogis out of Colombia and, and, uh, and the Havasupai at the bottom of the Grand Canyon and the Lakota and hundreds of other tribes from all around the world. It was fascinating. It was kind of a spiritual thing, but perhaps the things that really make a difference are the things that like, you know, the, I did a, a four-hour miniseries on ABC about children waiting for heart transplants. It was supposed to just be a 13-minute special on um, uh, 2020 back in the day with Diane Sawyer and Charlie Gibson where, you know, they featured a story, and the story was about children waiting on heart transplants, especially infants. And so I shot, and it ended up, um, they got excited about it, LA, uh, ABC, and they turned it, they said, they're going to turn it into a one hour special. And then they called back and said, no, we're going to make it a four hour mini series. So it went from a three month contract to 18 months. I was shooting inside surgeries, um, you know, with sometimes five cameras and so forth, filming um, heart transplants, sometimes of little babies where the heart was the size of a, wa a walnut and the, um, and the veins were smaller than a, you know, Barbie's little baby finger. And, and so you're sitting there going, my gosh, and multiples going on. And it was just seeing people, you know, a lot of people we lost, a lot of people because I got close to because I filmed them. I go into their chapel with them, parents and pray with them. And so I got very attached. And um, and it was it was, uh, it was those are the things I think that, you know, with the kids with cancer, I did a, a thing called. <laughs> that uh, went into 27 different languages and it was a documentary on kids in school and how kids can be cruel to each other with cancer. And, it was called, and one of the kids, I thought, I don't know the name of it, but I know when I hear it, it'll, it'll be in, in an interview with, with friends. They had friends and they paired friends in the school and that would help them because some of the kids were so cruel. And, and uh, one of the um, patients, a cancer patient, she said, I got tired of waking up and finding hairballs on my pillow. And that's the name of the film is Hairballs on My Pillow. And, uh, but, uh, it, you know, those are the stories and those are the, the memories that I think uh, we make a difference if we leave a legacy. And today, I mean, with what's going on in the world and our opportunity to leave a legacy, yeah, the, you know, those performers that were on last night, they can get on the stage, they can have zillion dollar performances and all the costumes and f fanfare. 
But when you got them in their living room, no makeup on, and they're sitting there playing and they put in pictures of first responders or people in the hospital and things that are going on. And it's, and, and, you know, yeah, it's, it's not something you could dance to, or it's not something you'd put on your CD, but when you feel the experience of that and the power through music and film, which is a whole nother kind of period shifting that paradigm are the, and that's where I'm going with what I'm doing now is making a difference um, using music, film, and stories to um, help inspire and uplift people. And and that's exactly what you do. And and I you know and I want to just say that <laughs> Mikey's like a four hour. He's like, wow, that's awesome. I mean, can you just hear Mikey saying that? <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I love you, Mikey. Love you. <laughs> and and I thought, how interesting was it that last yesterday? Mikey was on there talking about the the artists and the musicians and everything and how they are at home and 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 every and then you put it out there. Uh, oh, by the way, and, and so then I copy it and 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 share it on. And I'm thinking, how apropos, Mikey, that we we filmed that and and talked about that very subject. And then Kevin, um, he's saying incredible connections you've been blessed with. And you know, and I want to I want to go there a little bit. Uh, we have one of our songbirds that you have worked with. I love her, love her, Andrea Banfield. Uh, amazing. And um, <clears throat> you, let's go there a bit because it goes into what you are doing. And then we're going to, then we're going to go ahead and preview the movie that, or not movie, but the little clip, but the, you know, the video that you created to explain chemo buddies for life. And I'm so excited. Okay, guys, there's a little story here too. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I talked to Skip Typically. I talked to him and, and, uh, you know, Tamara is Tamara is Tamara, right? Okay. You never know unless you ask. And so I'm talking to him and yes, I'm intimidated yet. I then kick into being Tamara and I'm like, so Skip, I understand you write music and you do videos and everything. How would you like to work with us here at Chemo Buddies or Life? And I know he had to be thinking, who in the heck is this girl? I've just met her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you said it was the first thing. You hadn't even established your nonprofit. And you were trying to figure out how to do things with cameras and lights and stuff and said, Oh, you write songs too, don't you? I said, yeah. Would you write us a song? I'm like, you don't even have a nonprofit yet. You, do you even know the name of the nonprofit? What's it about? <laughs> you know, okay. So let's just say, you know, people say, talk about intentions, put it out there. And, and, you know, <laughs> it works. And you did. Yeah. And, 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 I, and one of my favorite songs I've ever written is, is one of my favorite songs is the one we just did uh, in a hurry. I think it had to happen in 15 minutes with Erin. She called and we were doing it the after 36 hours and I was trying to find some stock music. I couldn't find anything. And then I thought, wait a second, just write something. And all of a sudden I just like, man, I just heard it. And it was like, boom, boom, boom. And I was writing it down and, and I recorded it with the phone and sent it to Erin. I said, okay, I've got it. Here's the song. And she says, oh, that's great. What's that? I said, I just wrote it. That's me singing. And she goes, Oh my God. So anyhow, we, we produced it a little bit. I did just, you know, there because we were put, we were editing it and putting it together that night of um, after the 36 hour that was back in December. But yeah, so it's, you know, it's, 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 it's fun. The creative process when you are a, a hollow bone as the indigenous call it, and you allow for things to come through. Um, it's really magical. Yeah. So, we, you know, we will show that in a few seconds, too, possibly. I'll bring that up, too, and so everybody can see that. In fact, maybe that's what I'll do right this minute, and then we'll preview the other one. But I just want to say here, Mikey, who, you know, I've spent a lot of time with, he's like, yep, that's how Tamriel Hunter rolls. <laughs> you know I, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. <laughs> you feel you. the pain. You guys love me. You know? But, but okay, so, we do. But, you know, and thank you for it, because I just want to put it out there here for for right now the here and now this is march the 30th 2020 there are so many people that are saying okay i've always thought i was going to do this i always thought maybe i'll try that and 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 yet 
time and circumstance and everything kind of got in the way. Right now, we've been given a gift of time. We've been given a gift of being able to look deep inside of ourselves and say, what is our purpose? What is our mission? What is it that we feel compelled and called to do? And, and then grab on to that inside of ourselves. That's, you know, and, and that's quite honestly why I am like I am because it's not me. It, anybody that works with me knows that I really do believe that there I've been called to a mission. And so I'm out there and yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll just say it. And, and, <laughs> and then either people will say, yeah, I'll still talk to you or no, you're kind of crazy. Go away. But you know, there's always a good giggle over the story, and and, and that's what we're having right now. And and um, <laughs> yes, yes, that's so true. She knew. Uh, well, you actually get, you volunteered, my dear. <laughs> but yes, I did put you to work when she did, <laughs> because it was all for good, and that's what this is all about. And so you were called, and I'm going to pull it up as we're talking. You were called by our dear Aaron, and Aaron's like, okay, well, uh, I, I, you know, why don't you tell the story while I'm looking for the clip? Well, she called me earlier in the day. I mean, it was after it was afternoon, I'm sure. And um, she said, you know, it was really hard. Uh, 36 hours. Tamara was up straight, and a lot of, and she had a good team, but it was everybody was up, and it was just exhausted, and she just kind of collapsed, taking a nap or whatever. But just to pump her back up to let her know how grateful we all are, is there something we can do? <laughs> I'm like, why are you calling me? I mean, what? She said, well, like I'm thinking of a video. Okay, like, yeah, okay. Well, um, get everybody. Okay. Get everybody to send in a video clip with their iPhone, a little video selfie of just, you know, their appreciation, their honor, their love, their, their, how great it, everything went. And I'll send some questions, but start reaching out. Let's get as many as you can, send them, send them to me. And then uh, I'll start editing. I'll pull some of the 36 hour things down and some other stuff, some stock footage, whatever. And we'll put something together. And so, and, and I, so the first thing I do is like, okay, I'm getting these what's the soundtrack i got to find a piece of music so i've got a music library and some sources online and because i usually get inspired by music because it kind of sets the feel or the stage or the mood and the intention and so i didn't find anything and I, after five or so minutes and usually it hits me pretty fast i kind of like no 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 yeah yeah oh, oh yeah that that didn't happen so i was like okay what is it and so i just grabbed my guitar that was next to me and i just closed my eyes and i hit a couple of notes and i went Oh, 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 that's it. That's it. And literally in five or 10 minutes, I had the lyrics and the song written. And then I thought, okay, let me just get the phone out, send it. I said, just, I've got this. And it also kind of gave the intention of what people need to say. So I said, okay, you know, email them back and tell them to do this. And uh, here's, here's the song. And I played it for her on the phone. I sent her the file and she was like, oh my God. So I said, I want to, I want to record it like with a real microphone, not the phone. And uh, I mean, it was real rough, but anyhow, it worked. It was fun, and um, and we were able we we because it was so long and intense. I we were uploading it, and you were had a meeting. It's like <laughs> it's like no, the meeting can't end yet. I'm still working. I was still editing at the beginning of the meeting, and then I had to upload it. And I was like, it's like I was, I was sending people said, oh, wait, ask more questions. I, I need another twenty minutes. It's still uploading. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, we had a lot of we had 20 i don't know at first we had we had a lot of people on there you know and uh and everybody kind of so a lot of people kind of knew except for you you didn't know no clue and i'm looking for it right now because i just remembered it's not on my on our youtube it's on yours and so i am oh. trying to see if i've got it in the download in my download stuff right now and so um if I don't know if you can, if you have access to the clip, if you do, then we can do it that way. If not, then we'll have to share it another time. But I hope that you do because it's pretty incredible. And as as we're going forward, I will say that not only <laughs> did he do that at Aaron's request, 
uh, there was another request at the last minute and it was mine and you know and, and I have to apologize for all the last minute requests but you have been such a huge supporter and in the clip that we're going to be sharing and previewing today uh, in just a few minutes you're going to see why uh, he really does talk to it and shares what it is and, and you already did in uh, your history of your cancer journey, Skip, and that was being diagnosed far from home and not even at first telling your family that you you had cancer. That that had to have been pretty lonely. Well, and I didn't, I mean, what are you going to ask the doctors that? Like, should I tell my parents and my son what about my daughter? You know, look at the, pretty much, you know, what, I mean, what were they going to say? And they, you know, they don't know. And my, you know, I had some friends or I called my parents back there and I did call my dad because he was a doctor. And I said, don't tell anybody, but here's what's going on. And he asked me questions and I said, do not. So there wasn't that person that I could say, you've been through this. Mm-hmm. And you did, what did you do? And why did you do it? Or why didn't you do this or that? And so, that was that you know you can yeah you're gonna have the surgery and hopefully the doctors know what the heck they're going to do and the nurses and the treatment and so forth but you know it's like what what about everything else i asked the doctor one day i said well what about nutrition would that help and he looked at me like i was like i'm a cancer doctor it's like what? it's like it's like huh and i'm like you know what can i do is there something else i could do i mean i just say okay cut on me okay got my fingers crossed pray a little bit okay i got it no so um yeah that was the inspiration and actually um it's mentioned in there and the song that i finished writing the lyrics to actually there's a break in there that's kind of slows down and that is me actually um telling a little bit of the feelings i went through and the loneliness and the fear of and you know the confusion as to what do i what do i do what's going on here so, mm-hmm. yeah. well you know, and it, I don't know if you have the clip of the song available that you could play it because if we could do that, um, I'm still going back to see if it's going to show up, pop up. And I have so much stuff in this huge external drive. And so it's trying to search for it right now. However, in a few moments, we are going to talk, we're going to share the video that it's it's a premiere you know i i'm getting the verbiage down skip here i said we're we're gonna be previewing it but no it's really a premiere we're premiering it on this show great example of what okay, I did find a loving it. human being um, okay congratulations on chemo so if i can hey tamara i just wanted to oh. say how proud hey, i am oh, of oh. you and that i love you i love you i love you Okay, that's there you go. Okay, oh, it's coming. Come on. Where are you? Where you are? Okay, and copy and paste. Okay, and cool, 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 cool. Coming, coming to you. Okay. All right. Hopefully. I'll All get right. There. there. Yes. Let me. Okay. So, hey, this is live, guys. This is, <laughs> you know, and thank you for hanging with us. I'm gonna go and check out the yes, message. Thank you. Just a minute. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna grab it and. Uh, Get it so we can share it. Okay, just a moment here. All right. I love this little app because we can do all of this. All right. Here we go. So I'm. What I have to do now, guys, and um, I'm going to take skip down, and I will minimize myself, and so that the sound will uh, you'll be able to hear the video. So okay. So skip. We will bring you back in a few minutes and I'm going to bring this on and let's see here. Uh, here we go. This one's it. And let's see here. There we go. I'm super proud of you and I admire you in so many ways. And no matter what, I've always got your back, and I love you so much. There comes a time I look to the sky. Rainbow appears, I wonder why. I see a face above the clouds. Your whispers heard among the crowds. So if you're asking 
Thank you so much for breathing and being you. We've got your back. Hello, I love you and I got your back. Let's keep moving forward. We've got lots of work to do. I just wanted to let you know that I am so thrilled to be part of what Kimo Buddings is doing and to be part of your ministry outreach. And I want you to know that we love you and we appreciate all the hard work you've gone to. Tamara, I'm here for you. You know why I'm here. And you know how much I love and care for you and this mission. We're in this together, the dream team for the long haul. Let's do it. Not the God's clothes, the beauty of the I love my beauty. All of you. All of you. You are amazing and I'm so blessed to have found the one camera in my life and really proud of you and all that you just inspire myself and me and others and that, uh, you know, fighting to make sure that other people know that they are not alone in this world. That means a lot and I appreciate you very much. We all love you. I love you. You are a rock star and I always got your back. Always got your corner. Always got your side. You're front and your left. You are right. You are right. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Ms. Tamara L. Hunter, will chemo buddies for life be success? Yes, it will. I am with you. I just wanted to let you know how much I really enjoy doing the Kimo Buddies for Life give a thought. I want you to know how much I love you and I appreciate that opportunity. Thank you so much. God bless you. And you know, let's go out there and get that $50,000. This has been an incredible journey for me and I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to be a part of this incredible journey that you're creating. And it's helped me grow so much in so many areas. And I just want to reach out and say that I love you. And thank you for everything that you're doing for the human bodies for life. Hey, Tamara, I want to take a quick minute and thank you for the opportunity to get to work with the human bodies. Um, it sure has been a blessing in my life. And I want you to know that you are an inspiration. You give all you have and you are just honestly an amazing amazing individual um and we're able to be part of your team and we look forward to all things that we are going to accomplish together hey tamara we just want to say thank you so much for putting together the chemo buddy i love working with you and like me to have for me on the show yeah <laughs> have a great time so Thanks for giving us the opportunity to care and love and share and be part of your dream and what you're creating. We love you. Signing off, Ruth. And sexy. Hey, Tamara. 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 Hey,
So, so Tamara, who's, who's really making, making a difference in this world? You are. You are. And together, we will. We will. So you're asking, fire, pen, gold. I am. I am. I am. Who can stand within the storm? I can. I can, I can, see the sea reaching hand to hand. We are, we are, we are. What name can we climb? We will, we will, I will, we will. We will fail. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and I have to say, I'm humbled by it. However, you know, think about it, this guy's too. And, and the reason that I'm always so proud to show that is that that is the, our leadership team. These are the people that are involved with the organization for chemo buddies for life. And, and it, you know, the words that they're saying, sure they're saying them and they have my name there, but it's really their dedication to the full nonprofit. I see it as that they're giving their heart and their soul and they're dedicated and, and they continue to, they continue to show up. Right. Skip. It's huge. It's amazing. I mean, even Tony, who's amazing as it helps with uh, the new thing you're rolling out tonight, uh, who's just phenomenal what his support is, but he said he's worked with people in high level, um, high level uh, military and other kinds of project management. He's never even, and those people are paid and have expectations and deadlines. And he says, even there, I don't see the kind of response and teamwork and inspiration, conviction to get the job done as I do with this Chemo Buddies group. So, uh, but yeah, amazing people. And I didn't, I left some key people out of that because clips were coming left and right. And I'd say, Get them to say these words. I will, I will, I can, I can. And and if anybody can sing, have them sing along to this and sit here. Let's sing along with that. And it's kind of like all of it's like, okay. And I we didn't even, when you saw it, that was the first time I actually saw the finished piece because I was editing during the meeting and I just hit upload. I didn't know. <laughs> I hadn't even looked at it. It's like, oh, God. So it was fun, but it was a dedication of a lot of love and a lot of um admiration and respect for something that's so needed um 
um, right. we can relate to. Absolutely. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to take you back down and we are going to premiere your clip, the video that you produced for the event tonight. We are going to be rolling out something huge within the closed group for Chemo Buddies for Life in the community uh, for Magic Monday. And uh, that is hosted by Aaron Houchin and Renee, I mean, Ray and um, Gardner. And uh, we are going, we, our team has been working on this for months. And this is a three year project in the works. And you've been around the full time. You saw the other ones that all the activity in regards to this that we're rolling out tonight. And we're pretty excited about it, right? Yes, very excited about it. It's kind of like, will will this day ever come? And when will it be? And what do we have to do? What do we have to do to get there? So it's here. It's here. So I'm going to take you down. I'm going to get this loaded up, guys. Give me just a moment, and uh, we are going to premiere for the very first time. And what are you calling this clip? This piece. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if it has a name. We'll have to think about it. Get everybody. Everybody write in what they think it is. We. This is a name it contest. I love it. Yeah. Name it contest. Okay, so you guys are here. Please also put live or replay. And then if you have a name, put name it and then, you know, what it is you think the name should be. I love it. Okay, so see you in a few minutes. All right. All right, here we go. Uh oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, guys. Okay. Let me get this started again. All right. One more moment. Let me get this scheduled right. Put it right here. Wrong way. Here we go. Okay. Life is so fragile. And, and we're constantly, constantly reminded just, just how fragile life can be, especially when we or a loved one is told we have cancer. And, and even with the best doctors and nurses, our dearest friends and family there to support us. As a cancer survivor myself, I can tell you, we still feel very alone in this journey. In 2014, Tamara heard the word that no one wants to hear. After her surgery and during her chemotherapy, something magical happened. You know, the chemotherapy room is the last place anybody wants to find themselves. Yes, they're in shock, they're scared. I had no problem going there. I had had infusions all my life. Okay, and so I knew the chemo room. And I, I figured, oh well, I'm gonna lose my hair. Oh well. There's, There's a study that's been shown that patients who are socially isolated, isolated have, have a worse, worse prognosis, have, have a worse, worse outcome, outcome than the patients who are socially interconnected. Because although we do this every day of our lives, we've never, never had diagnosis of cancer. So the much as we understand, we don't understand the way we want to stay right. What happened was, it through a series of events, we met each other. We realized we had so many things in common. This was meant to, the synergy was meant to me. And she was here having a reaction to her chemotherapy on the very first visit. Sometimes things you have to do in the course of chemotherapy to keep yourself strong and together. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to do at the end of the day because there are tasks and to have somebody else there to kind of be that reminder saying, no, you need to have your lab done. No, you need to make that appointment. Uh, we need that. We need that in our lives. There are so many young people feeling isolated. So we decided to come up with Chemo Buddies for Life. You're there for each other. And I'm hoping that others will will kind of take your lead and see the, the benefit of carrying up uh, your, your phone call away. You're there for each other. So it's just it's fantastic. We have to sometimes face something that we think we can't. And when we do, we find out we have that strength inside of us all along. Chemo Buddies for Life is a non-profit cancer support group that improves the quality of life for those feeling alone through connections. As a support member or a patient, an 
for those whose life has been impacted by cancer will match you with the perfect body. We also connect you to a network of wellness teams made up of highly trained healers, therapists, coaches, educational programs, and a variety of community events, all founded on humor, hope, heart, and hugs. Humor, hope, heart, hugs, and a whole lot of love. We're offering you a free membership, so please sign up today, share this with your friends and family, and support this community in every way you can. No one should face cancer alone. I am a team whole buddy for life. We are a buddy network. No one cancer alone. We are a buddy. We are all here for you as a community of love. We are team whole buddies for life. If you've heard three words, you have cancer, for yourself or someone else, you belong with us, chemo buddies for life. Healing through conditions. Wow. Let me put my ear things back in. The audio was a little apologized for that. It was I was getting an echo. Wait, so moment, echo. I the yeah. audio what? Oh, the audio was echoing. It was really hard to hear it. I mean, you know, because it was kind of two audio tracks kind of bouncing. So. Oh, uh oh. Okay. Yeah. But well, we'll, we'll put a clip in and so that you guys can hear it. Um, but they're saying beautiful, uh, great job. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the name. Oh, how cool. The name of the video should be called oh. Love. Yeah. Like it. Uh, celebration Love Spiritual it. Connections. Um, oh, Freddie, good to see you here with us today. Glad you're here. And a uh, major echo. Yeah. Sorry, guys. You know, this is where it's, it's, it's live. What we'll do is I will, um, I'll put the, 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 the link in the comments so you guys can watch it there. And, and yes, wink, wink. It does share a little bit of what we might be announcing tonight. Uh, maybe, ah. <laughs> however, you got to get there tonight in the closed group. If you're a part of it, if you haven't joined us, join us because we really are, uh there's a lot going on in that isn't there skip yes there's a ton going on in the in the group um to be a member and to listen to uh, a lot of the educational material just a lot of the fun um you see people going through it's a private group so they really share their heart and soul with um uh situations they're dealing with and in a time like what we're facing right now it's a uh, it's really powerful to have a support group even if you hear other people going through it and how they're dealing with it or as uh, some of the people that um, you know have ideas and education you have misty in there that talks you works in the hospital and all the different things uh to prepare yourself and, and change the way you're living right now just to protect yourself and your family and um it's great it's, it's really amazing but we have an opportunity and mikey said it yesterday i loved it he was talking about the distractions, I mean, this is, even though it's tough and people are sick and dying and God just learned a dear friend uh, is uh, in critical care in Nashville, John Prime. He's been a friend of the families for many years, a great musician, singer, probably my hero, um, struggling. He's uh, he's uh, in an induced coma right now, and I don't know if he's going to make it. Um, and but, but yet... We look at life, and even when I got cancer, I said and in the film, it's, it, I looked at it as a gift. I said, okay, what's the gift in this? Even if I don't make it, it stopped me in my tracks. It has gotten me to appreciate things I've taken for granted. And if I am to continue in this life, and if we are to get through this, what are the things that we can do to leave a legacy or to really connect to purpose? Because the football games, the bars, the restaurants, a lot of the things are – are not happening and so it's a time to listen to your heart and your soul and really um recreate the, the true self you are into this reset this new paradigm that we're going to the world's going to be different and it's going to be i think 
us in many ways there's going to be some wonderful gifts through this process absolutely i agree with you 100 percent and and as we start to close this right now um again guys you know uh, thank you for for being here and and please do go back and revisit the link because of the sound situation again it's a it's it's been interesting there's been a lot of uh interesting stuff going on with the internet and the speed and the 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 challenges that have been taking place and and um and as we start to close this up i do want to say that you you have for your nonprofit. your nonprofit is one that is about uh, sharing what is going on out in the world and because with your background and we're going to go a little over time guys but you know what <laughs> a lot of people have the time right now to go so you know we're going to go ahead and do this just a little bit because I, I really want to imp and if anybody needs to leave I understand however uh, you have been waiting to launch something until you felt it was time and you have been out there telling other people's stories. That's what your nonprofit's about. And it's and talking about purpose and, and linking, uh, you know, uh, people together, you know, and you've, you're really great. And I want to thank you for what you've done for our organization in that category. However, now you've decided just recently that you were going to launch yours, right? Yes, I've got uh, two things. My, I've got my own nonprofit. It's a 501c3 called Amplifying Truth. And it's really to use whatever gifts, uh, skills, or experiences I've had and talent that God's given me to be able to use it for something good. And that's to tell the stories of other people on the front lines making a difference in humanity um, and be the voice, sometimes for the voiceless of, of if it's rescue, you know, horses or uh, cancer, uh, like we're doing with chemo buddies and, and you just go down the list of, of people on the front line, making a difference and telling those stories. Um, and then my, and that's kind of shaping the new paradigm of what do we want instead? And then I've got another thing I just launched actually, but it's more about awaken TV. I started that in 2002 as a, as a, um, I thought it was going to be a ministry, but what I realized is so many people are living in a, uh, Kind of an illusion a lot of the ancestral um, uh, wisdom and the prophecies and working with the mayans and, and talking about the end of the mayan calendar which was considered uh, the end of the world as we know it in the movies that came out well wasn't that apocalypse actually means lifting of a veil and the, from biblical to the hopi prophecy rocks to the mayans to every culture i interviewed over 100 during that that project um Every one of them talked about the lifting of the veil or the time of the sixth sun. We go into a new era, a new age. And so Awaken TV really is to awaken people to, um, it's kind of like the movie, The Matrix. You know, are you living inside of the matrix? Um, and if you take the blue pill, you stay in the matrix. If you take the red pill, then you step out and you, are you, you know, into Wonderland and you go down deep rabbit holes and you see things you never thought was uh, possible. And so once you wake up and then now that you've awakened, what do you want instead? And that's amplifying truth. And um, so it's a, it's a wonderful uh, to be doing this at this point in my life versus uh, so many of the political things or the hospitals or car commercials or vinyl siding or whatever it was in my career. Um, this has purpose and it has something to do with a legacy. If I do nothing else, it's kind of like that's what I stood for, whether people like it or believe it or not. And so I wanted to and it right. And I'm glad you 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 differentiated the two, the nonprofit and the and, uh, you know, your, your TV. TV. Yeah. Awaken TV, because um, and and it's it's really interesting the times that we're in right now and everything you've seen. We won't, didn't get into some of it, and that's okay. Uh, you know, we can we can always have you back on and talk about it. But and and 
However, with that said, the thing that I really want to just say thank you to you for is, number one, believing in the Buddies program, that people need to have someone there with them to get through something difficult. And that's what Chemo Buddies for Life has been and is, is and that's what we are going to be announcing tonight on Magic Monday the with your video and with the clip that you produced and um i want to say thank you for that and we've got one of the hosts that will be there tonight i think i must have taken a couple of posts. <laughs> i think she's being funny here <laughs> and 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 anybody that knows uh the the closed group um knows that Monday is one of the favorite nights because we have two very fun uh, hosts, Ray Ann and Aaron, and they always make it fun. They always make it magical. And we, and as a leadership group, when we decided which night we were going to announce this, it was like, okay, there's no question which one we're doing it on. We're going to do it on Magic Monday. So tonight we will be... Um, we will be, and I just wanted to recognize one other thing, and that is that Helene has mentioned it a couple times. She sees that you do have your purple pen with you. So <laughs> that's a joke within the group, guys. Don't, don't leave home without it. <laughs> a purple pen. All right. So as we start to close this up, what would you like to, you know, what words of wisdom, what nugget would you like to leave us all with, Skip? Well, I would say, you know, it's really important right now to be present. You know, we can look at a lot of things we should have done, would have done, could have done. We look at things we could be fearful about or uh, concerned, but be present and just know things are going to be okay. And, and, and really connect to your heart of to get to know who you are. And I think this is a, an amazing opportunity, not one we'd wish on anybody, but it's here. And so where's the gift in it? And be present and connect with your own heart um, and, and what your purpose is because we're all here for a reason. That's excellent. So true. So true. So as we close today, March the 30th, 2020, and the Service Service Hero Show, 365 Days of Awesome Celebrate Success Through Service. Skip Thomas, thank you for being the service hero that you are. Oh my gosh. Thank you for all you have done and Thank you for hanging around with this crazy person uh, since the beginning and and seeing the vision and helping now to explain it through your talents, through your your heart and your purpose and your and your soul, because it comes through in the songs that you write in the videos that you produce and in sharing in like as you guys saw yes he is uh, he's been on many of the closed group uh shows or chats is what we call them uh and and in in you know getting to know our community and and sharing your your story and your story is one of inspiration we all draw from it so thank you for that and and all of you that are with us please if if you support chemo buddies for life if you know someone that's been affected by cancer if you know someone right now that is feeling isolated and alone we want you to join us in the community in fact aaron if you want to put a a, a tag into the comments of how they can get into the community uh, we welcome you to be a part of it. And yes, we are making a huge announcement tonight at five o'clock Pacific, eight o'clock Eastern. It will be fun. It's going to, uh, you know, we're excited about it because truly we believe it is history in the making. Thank you, Skip. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tamara. See you guys later. See you tonight. Bye. <laughs>